All right, mofos, welcome back. And yes, I know it's been like two years since I made the last Git tutorial, but I am actually going to, in a few weeks, take my entire website and put it on GitHub, and make it open source. So I'm like, eh, might as well continue those Git tutorials that I was working on like two years ago. So here I am. And another thing I want to mention is that I don't have the repo that I made in the last video because, like I said, it was like two years ago. I got a new computer. So I made this one real quick. So I just went create new, new repository, and I just named it dogs. So that's my starting point for this video. And before we get started, the one other thing I'm going to mention is I'm actually going to use desktop.github. If you go to this website right here, you can download a free uh, kind of GUI GitHub program. And the reason I'm doing this for the rest of the GitHub tutorials is because instead of having to learn the command line and then also learn about GitHub itself, I think that's going to be a lot of information if I just throw it to you guys all at once. So instead, we're just going to keep it simple. And I just want to focus on GitHub itself and, you know, navigating around and what all of these things do. So I think it will be easiest if we just use the GUI version. So go ahead and download this. And again, I'm not going to show you guys how to install it because it is incredibly easy. Just double click it and hit next, next, whatever. And you're going to get, I'll show you the icon that pops up. You're going to get this icon on your desktop. So once you double click that, this is what's going to pop up. All right. So we have the desktop GUI, beautiful looking version of GitHub desktop. So the first thing you need to do is you need to log in, of course, and that just links this desktop program to your GitHub account. So I already logged in. Now, once you do that, what we want to do is this. We essentially just want to take this repo that we made and we just made it completely on GitHub and we actually want to download it so we can work on it, add files, you know, just pretty much just work on the website, work on a project. So how do we do that? Well, what we do is we click this little plus button on the top left and you probably are only going to have this one account right here. I have an organization now. I'll talk to you guys about organizations later on. But basically, click your username and then click clone. And as long as you have a repository on your GitHub account, then you can go ahead and select that and then click clone. So again, what this is going to do is it's going to download it to your own computer. And now it's saying, OK, so you have some files or a repository on GitHub. I'm downloading it onto your local computer. Where do you want me to stick it? Well, we are just going to stick this on. Where am I going to stick it? I might as well just put it on my desktop. So just select desktop right here or wherever you want to put it and click OK. So that's pretty much just going to download it. And boom, look at this. So it downloaded this. And even though it's empty right now, we can see that it is indeed a Git repository it was already initialized looking sweet so let's go ahead and add some files to here so we have something to actually look at so open up whatever text editor you want to use and I'm just gonna make one home page for now so I'm just gonna right click and hit new HTML file index.html and I already copied some sample source code and there you go so nothing too special right here so once you have anything in there you can even put a sample text file it really doesn't matter just go ahead and save it now whenever you open up github for windows you're going to see this file right here index.html now if you're just using notepad or something like that then that's the only file you're going to see which is great but the thing is i have all of these files idea idea all of these settings files now the reason i have those and you probably don't is because this IDE, this program that I use to edit code, it's kind of uh, special and it has a bunch of weird features. But what it does every time you open up a project or open up any you know website to edit, it makes a bunch of default settings files. And this is usually great because I love the IDE. But for this tutorial, I'm like, oh, man, now I have all that weird stuff in. I really don't want to add that to my GitHub repository. So you have a couple options right here. You can just go ahead and uncheck all of these every single time you want to update GitHub. Or what you can do is this. 
you can actually say, hey, instead of having to uncheck all these, I'm just going to have a setting that says ignore anything in the idea directory. Sounds pretty cool, a lot easier that way. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and make a new file in my repository. And this is just going to be a regular file. But you have to name it dot git ignore. So just go ahead and hit OK. And here you go. So now let me just ignore that. And all right. So this is a special file where if you don't want to keep track of any particular file, such as the settings files, then this is where you specify that. So I'm just going to go ahead and type dot idea. And what this is basically telling it is ignore all of the files in this folder right here. If I just wanted to ignore one specific file, um, I don't know, like maybe my settings file, I'll say like admin slash settings .html. So basically any files or folders that you don't want to keep track of, then you can just stick in your git ignore file. Now look what happens whenever we save this and pop back into GitHub for Windows. If I can click this again, all right. So now you see that all of those files that was tracking, it now got rid of. We only have two files that are really important to us. This git ignore, which is your main uh, ignore file. And of course the homepage, which is the meat of this tutorial. So from here, the process is essentially the same as using the command line. You basically write a little message of what changes you did. And I'll just write a created a homepage for the website. Looking good. And now what we want to do is we need to commit it to master. So go ahead and click that. And after this, we want to go ahead and click publish. So publish means basically take the changes that we made locally on our own computer and publish them to github.com. So I'm going to click this and it's going to dun 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 sinking, sinking, take some time to connect to GitHub and check this out. So if I refresh this page, look at that. So we now have all of the code for our website and also our git ignore file looking sweet. Now another thing I want to point out real quick is if you ever want to like share this repository with one of your friends or maybe your boss or teacher or whatever and you don't remember the entire URL, it's actually a pretty easy structure to remember. It's always github.com slash your github username slash the name of the repository. So you don't have to like copy this somewhere special github.com slash your username. As long as you remember the name of your repository, you should be fine. So uh, that ladies and gentlemen is a brief introduction to GitHub for Windows. And uh, yeah, I've still got a lot of stuff to cover, but that's it for now. I'll see you guys next time.